Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about the difficulty of classes in school, and how I think there's this idea circulating out there that harder classes necessarily teach you more, and that easy classes are kind of blow-off classes, and you don't learn as much. I think I used to buy into this idea a lot because of how teachers would talk about classes. But over time, now that I have the hindsight of going through many years of education, and taking time away from it, and then going back to school, and I've seen how much information I retain, and how much information is useful in actual jobs and applications, I've come to a very different conclusion. And I think I've come to realize that easier classes are often more valuable than I thought they were, and some of those really hard classes, I didn't retain the material as well. I want to give some examples of this. One of the things that I think is, is striking, that I wasn't really consciously aware of until I had progressed farther in my education, was math. I had this pre-calc class that felt really easy. I think at the time it even felt like a joke. Like, I would go to it, this was in middle school, I had it in ninth grade, because we were on a junior high system. So in ninth grade, I went to this pre-calc class, and the teacher was also the track coach. And often, he would give a brief lesson at the beginning of the class, and then we'd sit around and talk about sports a little bit, or he'd have us play on the computers. I don't remember doing much homework ever in that class. But when I got to uh, actual calculus in high school in tenth grade, I found that the people who went through his section were all really well prepared, often a lot better prepared than the people who had studied from other teachers in other schools. And I don't know, I didn't think about this all that much at the time, but I think, I think over time I've come to realize that when it comes to math, a really important part of how well you do at math is whether or not you get bogged down with math anxiety. And one thing that that teacher really did is he made the subject seem easy, even really tough stuff. Like, I specifically remember him teaching partial fractions. And he told us, he says, this is the hardest material you're going to encounter in this class. If you can do this, you can do anything. And there were, there were these little things about how he would talk about the subject to us. Like, I never felt inadequate, and I never saw anyone else in the class expressing feeling adequate, feeling like they couldn't do it. Like, his message seemed to be that you can do this, you're smart, the material isn't very hard, and he set it up so it seemed easy. And I think that's great. Now, contrast with a subject I took in college. I took some, I majored in math, so I took some high-level math classes, and I took abstract algebra. I took two courses. One was group theory, and one was called rings and fields. Now, group theory I thought was pretty easy. I mean, easy for an abstract high-level math class. It was not a super easy class. It challenged me. Uh, the book, all of these books are a little bit tough to read. They're these really dense math books, and you have to kind of pour over each page. But I thought the book was well-written, was accessible, and kind of fun. And I really enjoyed that class, and I did pretty well on it. And then when I went out on to take the Rings and Fields class, it was brutal. And people have warned me about this. They said, this is one of the hardest classes in the entire school. It is definitely one of the hardest classes in the math department. And I remember just banging my head against the wall a lot in that class. And a bunch of us would get together in groups, and we'd work for hours and hours and hours, and we'd get stuck. We'd have to go to the professor's office multiple times. And at the time, I actually found the challenge kind of invigorating. And I think that was partly because I was buying into this idea of, like, doing this is going to be really good for me, it's going to help me learn a lot, it's going to help me grow as a person, blah blah blah. So I do this, work my butt off in this class, it's really hard, but I get through it, and I actually got a good grade in this class. And I felt really accomplished. And it was kind of a boost to my self-esteem. But now here's, here's where shit gets real, so to speak. I take three years away from school, and then go back to grad school in math. And in grad school, I encountered a higher-level graduate course abstract algebra class. And what happens when I get to that class? I found that I retained 
almost all of the material from the group theory class, and I retained almost none of the material from the rings and fields class. It was like having to completely start over. And it's like, why, why was this? I seem to put more hours into this class. Why didn't I remember it? And that started getting me really questioning this assumption of like a harder class teaching you more. Because that group theory class, when I started thinking about why I retained the material, and how that related to me finding it easy, I think part of me finding that class easy was that it was presented in a way that helped me learn more. And so I was actually able to engage more deeply with the material. And I think the textbook was really well written, and it was at an appropriate level for me. In the Rings and Fields class, on the other hand, the textbook was really inaccessible, and I don't think it was a well-written textbook to begin with. I don't think that the author was as good a writer, and I just think the overall experience of the class, it wasn't as effective for teaching the subject. And I think part of why I was struggling in that class was that it wasn't as well taught, and that we didn't have as good a textbook and that the material was not presented at the right level for the level that we were at. It was at too high a level. We were given, given material that were, was too hard. And in that, that group theory class, because it was a little bit easier, we were able to sort of play with the material more, go over it more times, really master it. And that kind of working with the material is what helps you retain it more long run. And I think that's why, when I got to grad school, I retained all of the material from that group theory course, and almost none of the material from the Rings and Fields course. So you may not ever be studying any of these abstract math courses, but that was just my example because that was my major and then my degree in grad school. Uh, I think the same pattern plays out in a wide range of different subjects. And I want us as a society to start questioning this. There are a lot of professors out there that seem to have this attitude that like, their subject is the most important, and therefore they want to make it hard because they want people to put more hours into it, they want to challenge people more. And I don't think this is necessarily a rational approach to education. I think if you really care about more people learning your subject thoroughly, so that it can make a difference in the world, if you really believe that your subject is important, I think you need to teach to the level of your students, which means not leaving any of the students feeling like they're drowning or banging their head against the wall. I think that that is a sign that people are not at the optimal level of challenge. Now that easy course, that group theory course I took, was by no means like a pushover class. And even going back to that example of that middle school math class, I obviously learned the material, so obviously that teacher was challenging me enough. So sometimes you might be challenging people, but you're making it feel easy, and I feel like that's the kind of sweet spot. When you have a book that's really well written, it kind of draws you in and it gets you to think about it, it gets you to play with the material. That's my gold standard for education. I want us to question, throw out that idea that things need to be ridiculously hard in order to teach you a subject thoroughly, because I think that's wrong. I think that the best way to learn often involves a more moderate level of challenge that often feels easy in the moment. And it's often the fact that it feels easy that gets people excited about it, and they start feeling like, wow, this is fun, I'm really good at this subject, I love this subject, I want to think about it a lot, I want to do stuff with it, and like that's what gets people into the zone and, and makes them learn the most. So yeah, that's what I have to say. Um, I'd love to hear from you. Does this resonate with you? Do you have any stories of your own? Yeah, thank you.